Hey there everyone, I'm Lin Lin, and welcome back to the Dumpster Fire. I know I had been on break for a while, but I finally come back and it looks like this. What a shame. Either way, people who have been following my content recently will be pretty familiar with the former commentator known as Spockta. Someone who has partaken in simply too many heinous actions for me to discuss all of them today. If you want to look into those actions any further, my playlist on the matter is available. Either way, the most serious action of his that had come to light in more recent memory was that he he admitted to holding onto a thumb drive containing CP past turning 18. The call where that confession happened only ended up happening due to someone attempting to blow the whistle on the situation. That being a user called Manis, as he had released a video on Spockta before the call happened. And overall, while he did ultimately end up being right about Spockta, that certainly doesn't mean that he isn't deserving of criticism for the ways which he handled things here. That being said, it seemed that there wouldn't be really all too too much to say about him beyond that of the obvious for a while. That is until Manis released a video more recently, looking back on the whole situation and interviewing Junkie. Yeah, don't worry, we'll get to that. But before we do, if you see any merit in my coverage today, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to support myself by making the content that I do, so if you want to contribute to that, then feel free to do so. It's free for you and helps a lot for me. But back on topic, let's take a look at one of the most arrogant creators that I've I've talked about on this channel. So before we get into the video that we will be spending most of this video talking about, it's worth going into a bit of context. The situation began in December of 2019 with Manis making his video titled New Spockter Accusations. This video itself isn't really the sole focus of this video, but that isn't to say that it doesn't have its fair share of problems. First of all, the screenshots that are used as evidence against Spockter in this video were frankly not substantial enough for the allegations at hand. As while they do display some pretty horrific actions on Spockta's end, don't get me wrong, they don't do enough on their own to actually tie the account called Spockta shown in these screenshots back to Spockta himself. And at the end of the day, while I'm not saying that Manis or those who prompted him to make the video actually did do so, Discord screenshots are incredibly easy to fake, contrary to what some previous attempts of doing so may have you believe. It's really easy to hypothetically scrounge together screenshots with the same substance as the ones that Manish shows. And again, while I can't say for sure whether he actually did or not, that isn't the point. What is the point is that when handling a situation with the magnitude that this one has, you need to make sure that you have all of your bases covered, and coming to the conclusion that Manish does, as confidently as he does, based on this evidence, is at best incredibly dangerous. Oh, but Lin Lin, Manis was right about Spock in the end, right? It ultimately doesn't matter whether he was right in the end or not. At the end of the day, coming to the conclusion that he did, with the evidence that has the weaknesses that it does, means that ultimately, while he did luckily come to the right conclusion, the quality of investigation, presentation, or both was simply not good enough to handle this kind of topic. And that's only the start of this video's issues, as there are unfortunately a few more that are worth bringing up. One of which would be his seemingly inconsistent an attitude towards Spockta himself. Anyway, some ground rules I'd like to discuss before continuing this video. Um, like I said, these are all allegations. I'm not. My goal of this video is not to cancel Spockta, do anything like that. My goal is to get the truth out of everyone in this situation, and that means that I am going to be going at this as peacefully as possible, as hard as that's going to be, because Spockta for this. Yeah, I, I don't. My goal of this video is not to cancel Spockta right away or do anything like that. Uh, I just want to provide all the evidence I've been given because this has all been a private matter so far. My goal of this video, honestly, is to get a response out of Spock here. Um, not a public response, I just want him to DM me or anything like that to, I guess, try to resolve any of this, try to defend himself. I want to give him a platform to uh, defend himself because these are very, very big accusations and if it were uh, vice versa, I would want that decency to me. Anyway, so Spock here is aware of this. He is aware that there is probably something coming at him. If you are listening, this is your chance. I'm not asking for a response video, I'm asking you to DM me personally, and I will I will follow up with this video. I will make another video if you have any defense for yourself. Anything that justifies what you've done, even though I highly doubt it, please send it to me. I'm giving you a chance. If not, 
I mean, what the fuck, you're, you're just a pile. With how you made this video believing what you did about Spockta, why are you acting as if cancelling him is just beyond the realm of what you would want to happen? Furthermore, why do you then act as if you do hate the guy after the fact? Oh yeah, fuck Spockta, here's evidence of him being a noncer as the thumbnail suggests. But oh no, I'm not trying to cancel him guys, promise. I don't know man, it just comes across as you either being dishonest in terms of what you want out of this, or you're holding the idea idea of a creator being cancelled at such a stupidly high standard that it isn't even something you believe predators deserve. Like, I know that you claimed to be making this video to get the truth out of Spockta, but with how you closed your video out in that second clip I showed you there, you can't sit here and try to play the neutral party who just wants to find the truth, because it's pretty clear to me that you're spreading these allegations believing them to be true. And, if we set aside how little this video does to verify the evidence, it uses, because it doesn't do anything in that regard, that would have been perfectly fine. If you believe that someone is a predator, you wanting them cancelled and thrown off of their public platform is perfectly reasonable. Just don't do all that you can, much like Spockta did with Hopeless Peaches might I add, to toe the line as hard as you can so that you can pretend to be more neutral about the situation than you really are. Like if you are gonna get involved in a situation like this, the very least that you could do is not be so much of a coward that you have to pretend that your opinion on the situation is something that it isn't. And on top of that, there's also just this. Because I, I, I hate talking about pedophilia, I'm gonna stop the while I do this because I, I fucking hate this topic so much. Ah uh, yeah, well we're making a video presenting evidence to the public about how a very popular creator at the time was an alleged child predator. We're just gonna light one up with some of that 420 stuff, right? Like, I don't know how much more insensitive you could get. When an alleged victim had come to you directly asking you to break how they had been impacted by Spockta, why do you treat it this immaturely? Just popping in for a second after realizing that I forgot to make this point that I feel is pretty important. I'm here to talk about Spockta theory. Uh, if you don't know who Spockter Theory is, he is a, I believe it's a scaly, is, is the correct term. I've heard him use furry, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's scaly, since he's technically a lizard. He is a YouTuber who got exposed of pedophilia a year ago, I think, in 2018, I'm pretty sure. Uh, a lot of it was largely mishandled. The person who brought the evidence uh, forward into the light uh, did not know what the f*** they were doing. So that's why I want to handle this as best as I can. So there's no foul play on either side because it's already it's already rough going after Spockter be because of that fact because he has already been falsely uh, accused of the same exact thing. Oh, the original Spockter allegations were mishandled by someone who didn't know what they were doing, were they? Look, I don't like the guy any more than you do, but let's not actively downplay the fact that the original allegations brought towards Spockter by Stories and Pentagrin weren't just mishandled by people who didn't know what they were doing, they were maliciously fabricated lies. Let's not devalue that because giving that kind of outlook on the situation paints Stories and Penta in a lot more of an innocent light than either of them really deserve. But either way, back to the video. In short, this video from Manis wasn't really listened to much on release. Primarily because not many people actually found it at the time of release, but also because even for those who did, the video had a good few problems anyway that really had no place in a video talking about this kind of thing. Either way, that video isn't even why we're here today. Instead, we're here because after Spockter's confession call was released by Lyo, Manus decided to release another video on the situation, which quite frankly isn't much better. Then I saw the multiple and honestly dog videos covering the situation. Like, I really don't understand why this community feels the need to make unnecessarily long videos on everything they talk about. And forgive me for not watching all these videos front to back since most of them are over an hour long, but in case you aren't caught up, around April of 2023, a YouTuber named Leo Convoy made a video covering Spockter in a leaked Discord call between Junkie, Fagos, and himself. So we're just gonna complain that videos you haven't even watched are bad based on literally no knowledge, basically by your own admission. 
Nice. And on top of that, this very video is over 55 minutes long. Something that is rather funny because that means that as you complain at 9 videos for being too long, the video you do so in is longer than 5 of them. Only to then omit all but one of those examples that don't fit your narrative when showing the lengths of these videos through text. Look mate, if you want to complain at videos for being unnecessarily long, then first of all, I suggest you actually watch them so that you can decide on whether being that long was needed based on what the commentator in question actually had to say, as to name but one example, Aaron Tempest's video really couldn't have been all too much shorter with the amount of then uncovered ground it had to cover, and secondly, don't drag out your video longer than most of the videos that you use as examples. When it comes to setting arbitrary standards with no consideration for the context of the case, given how you admit you don't know that context, you could at the very least meet those standards yourself, especially when you explain a little bit more about what this video was set out to do. Anyway, back to the people actually relevant in the situation, on the 1st of June, I reached out to Junkie asking him for a few minutes to talk about everything surrounding the call that was leaked and spocked around the time I made my accusation. So the remainder of this video is just going to be the call I had with Junkie and a short conclusion about everything after while gloating that I was right about everything this whole time, which you probably don't need to hear if you're a psycho who actually watched everyone else's feature length film on the topic, and then I'll talk to my subscribers directly about personal stuff you probably don't give a about. So honestly, please don't subscribe off of this video as I hate this community and you will be sadly disappointed on the videos I upload whenever I actually decide to do so. So let me break down what all of those videos you call unneededly long were for. Keaton's video talks about Spockter's awfully insensitive instance of falling on the sword of Junkie, along with how he tried to lie out of his backside as soon as he realized that the smallest hint of a dissenting opinion was there. My video was to discuss how Spockter had taken advantage of my own inactions so that he could play the PR game to put more attention on my mistake than his, when he was in need of taking much more accountability than he cared to. Aaron's video existed to give a detailed explanation about the events leading up to Spockter's mistreatment of Heaton, to place further emphasis on how wrong it was while also going into some context that some general commentary audience members might not have known about. Just the Robots videos were there to talk about the inactions Spockter had taken in a more generalized sense, as well as releasing pieces of material that the public did not have yet in the first video and his video on you in the second. Lyo's video was there to release calls displaying how Spockter had not only admitted to his former ownership of a flash drive containing CP, but had also misused his platform by throwing someone he knew was vulnerable under the bus over stuff he knew was wrong just so that he could have powerful friends. Peach's videos were made not only to amplify the spread of important information about Spockter provided in Lyo's video, but also to criticize Spockter's pathetic attempt to respond on his community tab. And Salty's video was just a general retrospective on how Spockter's once good reputation went down the drain. The reason I'm telling you all this is that you complain at these videos for being unnecessarily long, with unnecessarily being the key term here. Because I don't know about you, but I would say that those videos certainly have much more of a reason to be the length that they are, and to exist in the first place, mind you, than a video that exists to update your audience and to to gloat about how you were right about Spockter the whole time. Your words, not mine. Yes, you were right about Spockter in your first video. Good for you. Do you want a cookie? But that does not change the insensitive and reckless way that you went about doing so that we talked about earlier, as that means that you being right ultimately came down to luck rather than your own actual sound effort in the matter. And that's not even bringing up the interview that he had with Junkie that I mentioned. I'm so incredibly glad that you portray yourself as someone who has no actual understanding of this community and the events that have gone down within it, as luckily for you, that leaves you with just about enough plausible deniability to say that you were just ignorant of the harm that Junkie had caused to multiple people, which leaves him in a position where I would say that platforming the guy is frankly dangerous. Or does it? Bear in mind, the little rat had not only done what he had to heat and Mitsuru, but had also known about Spockter's confession, only to sit on it for multiple years. That's who you're providing a 
platform to, is it? Lovely. I now have absolutely no reason to believe that you actually give much of a toss about the people that Spockdom may have impacted, when you provide a voice to the man who knew about what he had done, but said nothing. And it doesn't even end at just platforming the guy, as you then take it one step further to act as an outright apologist for him. So, as I mentioned in the call, I really didn't know what to expect when reaching out to Junkie. I was honestly never really close to him, and I don't know how he felt about me considering the call that was leaked, which was partly about my video. And I really have no interest in the drama that he had with pretty much everyone else in this community. I was really only interested in the stuff with Spockter, as I kind of feel like that was his biggest crime in all the shit that he's been through. So I know most of you have a lot of other reasons on why you hate Junkie and would never give him the opportunity to speak about his past mistakes or even apologize, which I totally get, and you're entitled to feel however you want about Junkie, but I really just wanted to give him a chance to speak about these things since he probably hasn't had a recent opportunity in this stage of his life to do so without proper motivation. Because I know what it's like to get stuck in your own world when making YouTube videos as part of a bigger community than yourself. You see a lot of people fall from the top constantly for good reasons, and it kind of puts everyone on edge. It definitely doesn't justify or excuse anyone's behavior, especially Junkie, but everything is a lot clearer in hindsight and with reflection. And like Junkie said, the last thing we want people to take away from this video is that you should forgive him. That's not up for either of us. All I ask is that you take everything into consideration and form your own opinion with everything we know from the past to now. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter if you do or don't forgive him since he'll probably never forgive himself. And you know, that's okay. If that's what fuels him to being a better person and not making the same mistakes, so be it. But considering he didn't do anything heinous, like on the scale of Spockter or even Fagos, I honestly hope he finds peace or closure in all of this at some point and makes a return if that's truly the route he wants to take. Oh, he'll probably never be able to forgive himself, will he? Good. Rip Bozo. You get what you deserve. After he has done what he has, I don't think he's in the position for anyone to be indirectly calling for people to pity him. Especially when you're gonna take that one step further and make the claim that he never did anything heinous. Look, you're certainly right to say that he hasn't done things to the level that Spockter and Fegost have. But let's not be here congratulating the guy for clearing a bar low enough to be stepped over with no effort. As much as you may not care for the drama that he has been involved with concerning other the people. You know that he sat on what he knew about Spockter for years. Don't act like that isn't heinous. If that's how you genuinely feel about it, then your standards are incredibly backwards, and you have even less of a reason to be steering out of your own lane and getting involved with things that you basically all but directly admit you don't understand. If I have any closing statements for this clown, it would be to mind the business for which you're paid. Don't get involved in situations that you clearly know next to nothing about, as you make a mockery of them, on top of the ones that you do understand enough to not say some of the things that you do. With how dangerously you handled the Spockter situation in the first place, on top of how you do so now, the egotistical energy that you radiate has no place coming from someone like you. If you know as little as you seem to, then first of all, you can leave it to people who do know what they're talking about, and secondly, you can at least leave it to people who talk about the situations that they do without setting unreasonably petty standards that not even they can meet in the video that set them. But with all that said, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.